Doctors have found microplastics in the hearts of patients. We encounter microplastics almost everywhere. Therefore, it should not surprise us that its harmful particles will also be found in our bodies. And recent research only confirms this. In these analyses, the researchers provided evidence that plastic particles can accumulate and persist in heart tissues. We deal with tiny particles of plastic at every step. It is present in the air, water and soil. We unknowingly consume it with food, which poses a threat to our health. In a recent study, scientists determined that microplastics enter the upper respiratory tract. What's more, tiny pieces of plastic can make their way into the brain. In turn, in a study from last year, scientists showed that we consume up to 5 grams of microplastics per week. Now scientists report that they have found specks of plastic in heart tissues. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Environmental Science and Technology. As a reminder, microplastics are plastic particles that are less than 5 mm in size. Unfortunately, microplastics are currently found in the water, air and food we eat. We know that it is able to enter our body through the mouth or nose. However, so far our knowledge of how exposed to it, for example, organs that are not in direct contact with the environment, has been quite poor. In a new study, scientists have tested whether microplastics can enter our cardiovascular system through both direct and indirect routes. A total of 15 people were included in these studies. For each of them, samples of their heart tissue were taken during cardiac procedures, and in addition, blood samples were taken from half of the patients both before and after the procedure. They were then examined by infrared imaging. In this way, it was possible to track particles with a width of 20 to 500 micrometers. They came from eight different types of plastic, including of polyethylene to rephthalate, polyvinyl chloride and poly, methyl metaacrylate. Overall, tens to thousands of microplastic particles were detected in most samples in this way. This also applied to blood samples. With the average particle size of the microplastics in the blood decreasing after the procedure, at the same time, however, the variety of materials from which they originated increased. It is difficult to draw generalized conclusions based on the study, in which a relatively small number of people participated. However, according to the authors of the study, their results suggest that different types of plastic microparticles can not only penetrate the innermost tissues of the human heart, they can even accumulate in it and stay there for a long time. One point in the context of the above research needs to be emphasized. The increased diversity of molecules after heart surgery indicates that far too little attention has been paid to invasive procedures of this type as a way for microplastics to enter the human heart. And on this occasion, they gain direct access to tissues and our bloodstream. However, to better understand these mechanisms and, above all, the impact of these molecules on our cardiovascular system. Further, more detailed studies will be needed. New Alzheimer's drug slows disease progression but raises safety questions Azi and Biogen have released recent data from clinical trials that confirm that Lacanemab slows down mental decline in patients with Alzheimer's disease. However, there are still concerns about reports of deaths blamed on the new drug. Phase 3 clinical trial data for an experimental Alzheimer's drug confirm moderate benefits and improved cognitive performance in humans. 
The test results were presented on November 29 at the Clinical Trials on Alzheimer's Disease Conference in San Francisco and simultaneously published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It turns out that a drug called Lecanemab slows cognitive decline by 27%. Compared to placebo, the clinical trials lasted 18 months and included almost 1,800 participants. The first information about the effectiveness of the drug was given in September in the announcement of the creators of the medicine. The Azai Pharmaceutical Company based in Tokyo and the biotechnology company Biogen based in Cambridge, Massachusetts Alzheimer's disease is one of the greatest mysteries in medicine. It affects older people, most often after the age of 65, but it starts much earlier. More and more people are suffering from it, and this is related to the increasing life expectancy. Unfortunately, this disease has now become the fifth leading cause of death worldwide. According to the World Health Organization, Alzheimer's disease is fast becoming one of the biggest global health problems. Currently, around 55 million people worldwide suffer from the disease, and this number could rise to over 150 million by 2050 if no cure is found. This disease is associated with the accumulation of beta amyloid and another protein called tau in the brain. Scientists now believe the disease emerges from both genetic and environmental factors. Although the exact processes that cause it remain a mystery, despite the lack of clarity as to the causes of the disease. It is clear that the aging process leads to changes that drive its development. Before the publication of the results, the media reported that the new pharmaceutical was to contribute to the deaths of two patients who participated in clinical trials. This has sparked debate in the scientific community as to whether the benefits of the drug are worth the safety risks. However, Azai denied that Lecanemab played a role in one of the deaths. It is now being investigated whether the drug had anything to do with the other patient's death. The balancing of risks and benefits is quite complicated, says Rob Howard. A psychiatrist at University College London who specializes in the treatment of dementia. It is not known what decisions desperate patients and their families will make if Lecanemab is approved. All available safety information indicates that Lecanemab therapy is not associated with an increased risk of death, Azai said in a November 29 statement. However, if it turns out that Lecanemab may pose even a slight threat to the lives of patients, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, will have a hard nut to crack. The FDA is expected to make a limited approval decision in January. The scientists are pleased with the rapid publication of the data from the studies on Lacane Map. Some of them had previously criticized the launch of another Alzheimer's drug, Adekanemab. Like Lacane Map, Adekanemab is designed to clear beta amyloid from the brain. Many scientists believe that this protein is the main cause of Alzheimer's disease. The FDA controversially approved adekanemab on the sole basis that it cleared amyloid from people's brains. However, there was no evidence of cognitive benefits from its use. Lecanemab, on the other hand, is the first drug of its kind to slow down the decline of mental abilities, as confirmed by clinical trials. In their course, doctors administered the drug to a group of people with early-stage Alzheimer's disease in several countries. Half of them received intravenous infusions of Lecanemab every two weeks, while the rest received placebo.
The researchers assessed the patient's cognitive abilities using a metric called the Clinical Dementia Rating Sum of Boxes CDRSB, which assesses a person's abilities in six areas, including memory and problem-solving, using an 18-point scale. After 18 months, Participants receiving Lacane Map scored an average of 0.45 points better on the CDRSB than those receiving placebo. Other cognitive tests used in the study confirmed these results, with the treatment group showing a reduction in the amount of amyloid in the brain. Some researchers believe that such a small change is practically imperceptible. It's a modest benefit, says Brent Forrester, director of the Geriatric Psychiatry Research Program at McLean Hospital in Belmont, who helped lead the study of Lacane Mab. His concerns are about security. About 20% of people receiving the new drug had abnormalities in brain scans. These showed swelling or bleeding. While less than 3% of those receiving the antibody experienced symptoms related to these abnormalities. During the study, 13 people taking Lacane Mab had strokes compared with only two people in the placebo group. This is only 1.4%. Treated. However, the risk of complications remains increased. Both deaths reported by the media took place after the formal completion of the study. One of the patients died of a heart attack, the other of bleeding into the brain. The researchers consider it likely that Lacane Mab may have weakened the blood vessels by removing the amyloid protein that lines the vessels in these people's brains. At the same time, these people were taking blood thinners, which may also have contributed to their death. Because of the association with anticoagulants and other factors, it's a bit difficult to determine whether Lacane Mab played a role in these deaths, said Marwan Saba, a neurologist at the Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix. When presenting the data at the conference, we are continuing to investigate the issue, he added. Some researchers suggest that the new drug should not be prescribed to people taking anticoagulants. The FDA is expected to make a decision on Lacane Mab on January 6 next.